Namaskar, good evening to all the dignitaries to the first hour discussion at Utsahin, the Educating Mind. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. We Utsahins are very proud that we have taken our first step today. We are glad to welcome all the dignitaries, members and all the audience witnessing online to the extravaganza of the discussion. So before giving the control to the stage, to our facilitator, let me specially introduce our speakers for today. Firstly, we have Sri Swaminathan sir. Sri Swaminathan sir did his MBA in Anna University and Certified Business Analysis Professional, IIBA Canada. He aspires to minimize the gap between industry, academia, and professional forum. Hence founded Nanahamsa Consultancy Services, which offers services in business analysis, healthcare, and life sciences. He has transformed as techno-functional expert during his journey with Satyam, Mahindra Satyam, and Tech Mahindra. He is presently the visi visiting faculty and India chapter advisor and thought leader for International Institute of Business Analysis, IBA, Canada. We also have with us Dr. T. Subhashini Ma'am. Dr. Subhashini Garu retired from Telangana State Government Service from a senior position. She has doctorate in microbiology and post-graduation in education. Presently engaged as a consultant in School Leadership Academy, SCERT Telangana, Hyderabad. That with even rich experience in teaching and exposure on several World Bank projects for DPEP, SSA, RMSA, Dr. Shubhashini started her career as faculty in Teacher Education College, Andhra Mahila Sabha, and postgraduate teacher at Residential Junior College for Government Service. She held several top positions such as Girl Child Development Officer, Early Childhood Education Officer, Planning Coordinator. Most of her services were contributed in training teachers, community, and mothers. Her services were used by corporate as general manager operations to the non-profit organization, during which she successfully established a chain of 13 preschools and a daycare in green cities in Telangana. I would also proudly like to invite our third speaker, Mr. Anil Kumar Patnaik Garu. Anil Kumar Patnaik Garu, an enthusiastic educator with a play, flair for writing on topics related to innovative and engaging educational methods. His articles got atten attention when they were published in the Hans India Orissa. Magazines like Teacher Plus, Touch Education, Gan Vichitra, Infinity Education, etc. He's known for his creative skills, story writing, his dramatic and mimicry abilities, disciplined lifestyle and contributions as a community worker. Gearing young people to their fullest potential comes naturally to Patnaik Garu, the motivator owing to his genuine communication skills. So thank you very much for making us proud today, for accepting our invite and speaking today. So without any further ado, let me welcome our facilitator for today, Mr. Raghuram sir, to take the control of the meeting for the discussion right from the heart and role of values in education, aligning inspiring thoughts. Raghuru sir, over to you. Good evening, Namaste. Raghuram here and uh, thank you so much everybody 
for accepting our invitation and being present today. Before I uh, hand over um, uh, the dais to the speakers, I would like to just brief out the protocol to be followed during the talk for the day. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, already questions are posed and distributed among the speakers as we have seen the process flow. Uh, if you have any questions, further questions, you may post it only on the chat box, please. And uh, attend the complete session and benefit from the input shared by the experts. And please bless all the speakers with your wishes. And let us know if we have missed out any points by any chance to our mail, utsahin.educatingminds.gmail.com. Yeah. When we look around ours today, on every media, almost half of them are filled up with news about people going haywire and doing all the wrong things, choosing wrong career and taking wrong path. Number of crimes is increasing every day. It appears as if the level of values is are deteriorating. I now request Sri Swaminathan Garu, who is an expert in this particular field of you know, minimizing the gap between the academic and the industry, who aspires to minimize this and uh, to help us understand how this can be minimized in his talk. I welcome Sri Swaminathan Garu. Sir, over to you, please. Am I audible to all of you? Yep. Thank you very much and good evening to everyone. This is a proud moment today of being with you all. And, uh, and also, I mean, first and foremost, that, you know, I want to congratulate this platform, Utsahin, Educating Minds. For me, the moment I was seeing this, for me, what it means to me, education means it's a gradual process of changing one's livelihood and their behavior. This is what all about educating mind. But I mean, I think Utsahin, unless otherwise you are stay inspired and stay united and collaborated, that is not possible. That is the right way of starting a platform. That's what exactly I'm going to share my experience today, that how this, the role of values in education will be useful for all of us. In that context, I just want to start my experience to start with that, you know, there are three areas that, you know, we have to start with. When I, when I started my life as a student, and then I'm transforming as a, from the student life to build my job. That time the job was available all the time it is a kind of a ready job skill need to be built and developed. So if I have X amount of skill, I can get in and I can start my job for minimum, say, 15 to 20,000 rupees. That is the way the life has started. But when you really get in, today, the most of the audience, I believe, or either an institution builder or who are partnering an educational institution, it's a great experience as a student. I really feel like that when I'm just getting into a job, and honestly, I was blank. Why I was blank? Whatever I got as a student, when I'm just getting into a professional life, and it was completely different. My environment is different. The ecosystem is different. So what is education means? Whatever the education I have in my college days, I mean, it was useful to, I mean, the entry barrier was minimum because I had a, a post-graduation and with that, I was called for an interview, but when I get into the job, I felt that the completely, there are three different environments that happen, is there. One is that business as usual environment where my job is to take care of my operational work, whether it is a sales delivery or solution, I need to take care of the daily work. That is a starting point. Then sometime, if I prove my capabilities, then I'll be just enhanced to a minor enhancement. I can do a change, a little bit of change here and there. Because without any customer complaint, I can do it. Then comes to a third, a game changing, where if I do these two things well, 
I would have given an opportunity to just build a game-changing innovations that is only possible. But by the time I mean I come to the third stage, almost 15 years are over. This is what the reality of life. So what I really mean, the role of values, in my opinion, there I mean there are a lot of values. Nice that you have put up the plural values that you know I can I wanted to speak today only about three values. Uh, it makes sense to everyone of you as an institution builder. One, the value of experience. Two, the value of engagement. Three, the, the value of expression. These three things, if I if I incorporate or in, I mean internalize in my educational system, that is a great thing. But before getting into that, I just want to uh, take out the misconception from you that the moment of value immediately I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, the, the group of thieves together uh, share a value system that, you know, I mean, if you do any, I mean, theft is not bad as long as you are taking care of the family. So the value is always, if you don't apply the principles and ethics in value, the whole value system go to, I mean, it will get into the bad business. So here we need to think that any value system should be a principle-based value system. If you get into an industry, I mean, there, the most important part of the value system is that experience. When I say experience, I just want to share a couple of experience when I was working in Satyam. When we start our 108, you might have seen that, that I mean, that 108, you know, that in emergency, the ambulances and so on, everyone knows about them. But the, the, the way it was, it was built, or the problem statement we built, almost three to, three to six months, it took only to build the problem statement. What is the problem statement? If you minimize the pre-hospitalization time by 20 minutes, we can save a lot of lives. In other words, the problem statement is, we are losing lives because we could not bring the patients to the hospital within 20 minutes. This is the problem statement. But it is not that easy for us to build this problem statement. It took almost six months to build this problem statement because we have to look in different area. Because in life, when you say it's very simple, when you do know the reality of the life. In simple way, if you put a dot, it's a full stop. If you put three dots, it just continues. But that's the way everything goes when you are when you are doing it in real life. This is what really happens. But we could build that. After that, also the problem never ends there. We, you know, the visionary and the management clearly knows that we are capable of building only center of excellence and showcase to the government that this can be done. We clearly knows that. If we scale it and then put a price, for example, today, if you would have done somewhere around seven, 10 years back, the management would have done that. If we will send you an ambulance to your house when you are in emergency, but you may have to pay 1,000 rupees for that, none of you would have used these ambulances. That's the reason we went back to the government and say that you people can only scale, but we can create a system or we can design a system and put up a model for them. From there, what really happens is that the real life situation is that when you get into emergency, we need to bring that the ambulances within 20 minutes, but without technology, it is not possible. That is what yesterday, I just want to take yesterday, Mr. ASM Garu's thinking that once we are going global, so education need to be global and we need to understand the best practices and lessons learned from the global. Second, that we are getting into a situation it is more of personalized. See if you call it education or health uh, or anything, mobile, everything is personalized. So education need to go towards personalization where the industry is looking for a person who has the skills and capability to build the problem statement and solution. And further example is that Further, we wanted to build a telemedicine for the rural. When we wanted telemedicine for rural, 
I am talking about way back in 2008 or 9. We know that the highest infrastructure available in rural is the copper wire. So we were not thinking big. We were not talking big things on that. We are only thinking that, you know, our, our CEO told that day, that even Mr. ASM is also part of it, that he says that whatever the infrastructure available in, I mean, in the rural, in the village, can you build a telemedicine system? So we just went back, I personally went back and said, yes, it is possible. So through a copper wire, we have got a tele ECG system and connected to Narayana Hatyalaya. And we started creating cardiac consultation with the ECG testing for 25 rupees for all the villages. From there, what we have really learned is that we have created that we are going to build a kind of a system, a tele ECG system, which is useful for scalable system. Second, I'm just getting back to the next level of this thing is engagement. Engagement is that if I'm not next 12 minutes, I'm not going to talk to you if it's relevant to you. I know that I lose attention from you. And at the same time, I also know that I need to keep you engaged in every minute, which we did in IAB International Institute of Management. I mean, Institute of Business Analysis Canada, what we created is we have created a WhatsApp community. Through a WhatsApp community, we have connected 2,000 plus IAB members. And whatever they ask for, they call for, they can engage. We are in continuous engagement. So we can create, we can leverage the social media for the engagement. While we are relating also, we have to take out the voice from the noise because social media is the highest noise. From there, even if you take WhatsApp, WhatsApp can be used very, very effectively and efficiently in engaging the student's life. It is possible. Third, then, then I spoke about the third value, it is authentic self-expression. And what is that authentic self-expression which only academic institute like yours only can do? What I really by meaning by authentic is that it should be in combination of integrity, instinct, and insight. Integrity, yeah, this has to be, I mean, it is not, we need to be honest and true to ourselves. Only an institution like yours can create an ecosystem, which I have also seen some of the, because I am a visiting faculty, to a non-formal education. You know that there are three channels of education. One is informal, formal education, which you already know, but informal education. I mean, in the sense, over a tea, I think I can do many things. This is the way that informal way, things and through peers, we can educate many things. But when it comes to the non-formal education, that is exactly the Utsagin is done. Create an ecosystem or an atmosphere where you make people to become you know, more inspired towards the purpose and connect to that individual purpose to the organization capabilities and experiences. That way what happens, the education becomes truly personalized, truly, you know, you can build it. It is also scalable, like, you know, the way when you wanted to do, because the formal education, though it is doing a level, level of whatever it wants to do, but after some time, it is for fit for all. Like, you know, it is, it is like, you know, common for all, but individual cannot get connected. But after that, in my opinion, with the, that authentic self-expression, and what I mean by authentic self-expression is that be true to yourself. Whatever you don't know, you tell. Whatever you don't know, you don't know. And what I really, when you are, when you are looking for an opportunity, don't look for an opportunity beyond three to five, because you can't manage in your life more than three to five. You can't manage more than two children today, and you can't manage three to five. So what I need to do? Go there. How you are? You, if you are very authentic to yourself, and if you are true to yourself, you can you can leverage your integrity, and you can leverage your instinct. Instinct happens through coming to continuous practice, and also to insight. You can insight will come from like Utsagin kind of people. I mean, I mean, the educating minds provide this. With that, what I want to conclude here is that how do we educate the mind? There is an academia mind and there is an industry mind or corporate mind and there is also a professional forum mind. They have to sit together, collaborate ourselves and see to that we are, we are available for everyone 
end of the day, education needs to be personalized and it has to be student centered and it has to be built on student strength and which is very much possible to a non formal education like sorry and i really feel like you know once again i congratulate everyone of you for creating this platform and giving me an opportunity for me to provide this particular opportunity and thank you very much for giving this all your advance thank you thank you so much uh, swaminathan sir with your wonderful experience uh, what i have probably jotted down is it's a, it's a, a, a complete page but uh, what uh, the message you have probably given is uh, we have to inculcate the value of experience value of engagement and value of expression among the school students that's what i have learned out of this one and uh, now we can make it very practical uh with the education system that's it's already done by the nep 2020 and thank you so much for for uh, sparing your time and now i go on to the our second speaker uh where education is necessary for building character of future citizens to choose their right path of living as uh, our swaminathan sir has already said and education helps the students to follow the curiosity and find answers to great laws of universe education helps in increasing the potential of children by enhancing their skills now i invite dr t subhash nigaru who has personally seen and experienced and supported all these situations during her long tenure in the state education department i request her to deliver her talk now over to you ma'am namaskar a pleasant evening to all of you at the outset uh, i thank utsahin ji to identify me as the speaker for the first program and i i feel very privileged to that without wasting uh, much time on this um let us discuss on the role of values in education so talking about the types of values uh, as we all know that values are different types individual values social values cultural values are also there <laughs> and uh, yesterday some of our uh, uh, esteemed uh, speakers told that the global values are also very important and the spiritual values which i i like most because that is what the need of the hour the individual values which helps us to grow uh, as an individual and which shapes our uh, personality the which i um, believe very strongly in that without values we can't shape our personality to what we have expected and for instance uh, if we want to take a decision or if we want to stand on something our values are very important to that um, i just want to give an example um, when I, when my son was uh, very young and uh, uh, in the school the school the school used to ask the cast cast column in the application every year they used to send that i used to tell my son that blank uh again the teacher used to send that again i used to tell that no need to tell any cast okay over the years it has built in in the individual and uh, when he was at the age of his marriage when i proposed some from my cast he just asked why you are asking now when you have brought me like this <laughs> um, uh, you should not ask any cats why you are asking so that is what the value we have we can build in in our children whether it is our children or our students we have to build in such kind of values uh, and that actually shapes them um, and uh, that individual values will also help them to take decisions in critical uh, situations so this individual values again will reflect in the society values or community values where all individuals live in one place will reflect that values in the society also if there is no caste creed in the community if the individual is not thinking like that naturally the society will not think so the individual values will always reflect in the community so have, having a very happy and harmonious life if one individual is uh, wants to have that will reflect in the society so the harmonious living and happy living is always uh, wanted by the society now coming back to the culture 
this is very critical this is very sensitive to talk also the culture is changing day by day take for example uh, in uh, in the past uh, consuming alcohol was a taboo in the society right at least in the middle class so now uh, now we ourselves are also changing that we say that okay that's a social drink so the names are changing the days are coming and it is all uh, 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 the, the culture values change by time to time but it is very very important to protect the culture values and it is very important to transmit that cultures from one generation to the other generation which i feel is very very uh, valued valued uh, 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 in the education we have to talk now coming to the global values what is a global value why you want it if you are happy that is enough right why you want a global value if you are happy if you consume everything whatever resources you have and you don't want to leave anything to the future generation is it a value no so we have to think in such a way that we have to protect the environment we have to protect the nature we have to use our resources properly and we have to maintain peace and prosperity of the globe yesterday some of our speakers also said telling that what is the contribution from my side to the global peace and prosperity that is what which has to be inculcated through education or from adults to the children now spiritual values in the beginning only i said i feel it is very very important which promotes conservation which actually promotes conservationism and also transform our consumeristic value approach which consumeristic value approach whatever we say whatever we do whatever action happens from us we expect something is it not if we are helping others if you are helping a friend if you are donating something to arfani temple again we are expecting we are expecting something from uh uh from the action which we did it it just became so consumeristic which should not happen the spiritual values which will bring in is that reduces our self wants this i want that i want these want things will become reduced and a self discipline, discipline will come daily doing puja is nothing but it is a discipline which we have to inculcate in the children and at the same time a control on self a self control also will come through spiritual values sharing and giving attitudes also develops through the spiritual values so example when you when you are in the temple or in a ashram when you are doing some service the immense happiness which you get will not get anywhere simple distributing the prasadas will give so much of happiness if this we inculcate in the children at the very young age the children will automatically will be shaped into that those giving attitude and sharing attitude while realizing the importance and i coming back to the education and values why education why values what what is the link between the education and values while realizing the importance of this education that helps us read write and to get a good job it should not be like a formal education this formal education should be based on some values this is what i feel when a value based education can strengthen the child with optimism with self esteem with commitment to personal fulfillment and along with the ethical judgment this is what we get the ethical judgment and also social responsibility if it is based the formal education is based on these values now always i get a question from so many people who will impart who has to do this there's a again that everybody wants to shift this responsibility from one to other the parent says that no it is a school responsibility the school says that no no the child is coming from parent from the family so if the family is not having values what i will do so it's not be like that it is the role of parents it is the role of family it is the role of school and it is the role of community also to impart this values now in school as a teacher it's it's a very vital role the teacher plays so 
teacher should be a role model to the uh, student. And whatever the teacher does in the class, the student automatically absorbs that and he will imitate. Now, and again, the question comes, what is the right age? When I have to start imparting the values, I feel that there's no age. From the womb to the womb, the children is learning. So we have some instances, we have some proofs also from mythology, from researchers say that when the child is in the womb, the, ch the child is learning. And this is what uh, the Abhimanyu has exhibited. So the, the mother has to start doing that whether she can learn, she can listen to the good uh, teachings, preachings, good songs, um, prayers, all these things will definitely result in the child's values when the child is born. The preschool, next, at what stage? Preschool and primary stage, I feel the very, very uh, receptive stage. Whatever we tell, the child will just absorb that. So take advantage of the age and start telling them. Don't think that the child is two years, the child is three years, now that it, the child can't understand all these values. No, don't ever tell uh, that this is a value. Just tell them through stories. The stories are the best way to impart values. So when you are telling a story, need not tell that this is the moral of the story. Why? There is no need. Automatically that will be, uh, that will be understandable and the child can understand what you are telling. So, and the third stage is the secondary stage in the school where the children has come to adolescent stage and they become very individualistic. They don't want to accept very easily. Only thing we have to do is uh, we have to, uh, we have to uh, build a confidence in us that they should, they should believe us that what we are telling is correct. So then they, definitely they will do that. And I used to do in my school uh, to get this confidence, I used to ask my students four questions and ask them to write on a paper. What is the best thing you have done in your life? First question. The second thing I used to ask, what is the worst thing you have done in your life? And the third point, what do you want to become in your life? And fourth point I used to ask, how can I help you to go to reach that goal? The children used to give such a wonderful answers because I used to tell them that these answers are very confidential. I don't want to share with anyone, not with your friend, not with other teachers also. So they openly used to write so many things and they have done a worst thing I know. The worst thing also they used to write. I can't tell all those things, but very worst things. But I used to discuss that in private, in isolation, I used to discuss with the child, I used to guide. The child, the children used to come so close to me after four, five years, after 10 years also, the children are calling me and taking my suggestion. And also just like that, yesterday also somebody called me to greet me on the Independence Day. Even though I'm retired, still they are with me. So that is what we have to get confidence of those children at this especially very sensitive adolescent age. Now, how to impart? As such, I have already told, it's a very silly thing. We can't teach any values. We have to follow. Children will follow us. That is what I tell. There is no need to have separate subject in the school. And if it, if it is a subject, again, the exam comes, the mark comes. Again, there will be something else. So it should not be like that. It should be like, the, it should be internalized while you're teaching whatever is your subject. No, we can also say that sometimes we are like, we are restricted to our PDs, PPTs and posters to impart this. No, it should not be like that. As I told you, the values are lent by imitation. Whether it is a mother, a father, a family member, or a teacher. And at one point of time, the teacher will become such a fascinating model for the child. Whatever the teacher tells, they, they accept. When they come back to home, if mother tells also, they won't accept. They want to follow only the teacher. So the teacher has a very crucial role in that. So telling the values through 
uh, stories and mythology and mahabharata this is very old uh, core of our house the grandparents used to read so many epics so many stories to our children unfortunately it is missing but even the parents can do that the bedtime story should be these things which are wonderful and we are very lucky in our country to have this kind of uh, epics with us and it, which has a long lost early um, uh, impact on the early years now the reading biographies of the great leaders we know many of them are there uh, freedom fighters are there very good to have and some of the practices in the school i we used to do like putting a honest box and it used to be hanged in the school uh, gate uh, or in the school assembly where the children uh, will come and put whatever they find in the school campus even even a safety pin also they used to put in the safety box so we used to give to the child whoever uh, uh, lost it or uh, the thing which they belong so we used to get even the silver chains also such a honesty the children has a practice in the school that is the only way we have to build in the values not through any education but however we have uh, uh, many other things we can do even telling uh, uh, i mean teaching science lessons through the science lessons also we can teach them when we are uh, uh, telling about the plants growth fertilizers we tell them that yeah fertilizers we have to use but minimal uses of fertilizers why minimal usage how it is going to harm the global uh, environment or the nature so the, those are the values which we can tell them subhash nagar yeah um i know i will I, 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 no 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 <laughs> not like that yeah yeah please 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 i will i will just wind up yeah. the, the last thing the result of these values change is our perspective of life make responsible citizens and they will it will give a 360 degrees and improves critical so it is very easier for us to have um, improve critical thinking improves more analytical more analytical and uh, i'm sorry it's okay uh it is it it will become a more analytical towards the situation and become problematic okay so yeah. uh, uh this l actually seeps the lot of positivity into the individual and reduces the negativity that's all thank you so much for giving me this opportunity thank you so much uh, subhash nigar i know how much you were excited and you want particularly you know i was uh, concerned when uh, you had taken a pre primary which is your most lovely subject and need just to say everybody that you know ndp has taken a pre primary onwards from this year onwards which was not there yeah. and for which she has been fighting for the past you know i know uh, since 15 20 years all right uh, now uh, we have got a wonderful uh, you know personality in anil the aim of education has been to bring out the hidden potential in every child it is the same in even in this 21st century also children are to be helped in proper utilization of available resources which include the time and leisure also so mr anil kumar patnaik is an expert in this particular area and uh, he is not of that kind of you know complete the knowledge more knowledge and yet more knowledge type of teacher in his school and i invite anil for that anil over to you please thank you so much sir namaskar and my namaskar to chain and the entire universe that it envelops and very feeling very privileged to be a part of this maiden venture and just see education without value exists not and without education without value exists not and value value without education not manifested mean to say without value education is just learning this is just like forcing an individual with heaps of information this is just for survival when understanding value just enlarges the perception of the individual uh, just a one line one liner for value if you ask me is that uh, value cannot be taught values are perceived through inspiration under created conditions 
there are two important values which must be deep rooted in an individual and the first one this is the mother of all values for me in my point of view it's honesty when someone is honest to himself or herself there are so many other virtues that follows like when someone is honest they, he or she will be sincere loyal forthright truthful there are many they all are interrelated but there is a dogma about honesty versus the integrity see integrity is the core value it is a broader perspective like the saying goes uh, there is a wallet full of money on the way you found out if nobody is watching you what will you do with that if the answer is when no one is watching me if i find a wallet full of money i will keep it this saying of truth this truth is not honest this is just an i was when an individual is not honest to himself or herself this he cannot that integrity misses out there in the core of integrity honesty exists when an individual assures his or her dignity he or she doesn't compromise on value the second important value for me is dignity of self even our preamble says fraternity assuring dignity of the individual just one small uh, anecdote i will tell there was a village and and there was a school which was run by older people of the village retired people and they were the members of the school one fine morning when children reached the school to their surprise school was declared holiday when they inquired they found that one of the member expired so they declared holiday children were returning on the way two old men two old people those who were members of the school were talking this uh, group of children were returning so one of the child is telling the other hey look two holidays are standing there this is what very neglect this is because when the child doesn't respect himself or herself he cannot give dignity he cannot treat others with dignity <clears throat> this is the this is the reason the most important for for our society is the teachers must be taught well and trained well and you know there is a one there is a hierarchy for teachers how what the job of teachers the first and the four top level is inspiration the teacher who cannot inspire must motivate the teacher who cannot motivate must transform the teacher who cannot transform must inform the teacher who cannot inform must contact who cannot contact must manage and who cannot manage leave it to fate <laughs> so that job of the teacher is mostly everywhere it should be inspiring the teacher must inspire the teacher's job is to keep the enthusiasm and inquisitiveness of the child intact when this is done children know what they want to know and they will find out their resources and will thrive for excellence uh, recently last just one incident i would like to tell every year we conduct joy of giving uh, during the autumn break we give a circular Uh, different types we do, but one of the thing we do saving pocket money drive. During the vacation, whatever the pocket money children save, however the meager the amount is, they save and after the vacation they come and deposit with the teachers. Last year one child came up and gave me one thousand rupees of notes of different denominations and told me, "Sir, I have been saving this just to give it to you." when you are intentions are honest you inspire perhaps that has happened with uh, late ramakant achrekar he understood that this small little sachin is born for cricket perhaps he whispered in his ears he used to take him to different academies and you know when the teacher blossoms he expands the horizon of the child's perception and rest is history he is sachin ramesh tendulkar and everyone it was after our meeting was got over yesterday that the main news was mahendra singh dhoni retired he declared retirement and uh, every, almost everyone it's every alternate day broadcast ms dhoni the untold story really it is untold one of the scene where little mahi was deeply moved his father was a pump operator in mekan company from the mid of the sleep in the night he used to get up and go to the cricket ground nearby and water the ground since the quarter and the ground nearby when the father used to move out little mai used to go to his balcony and in the chilly winter night he used to watch 
his father watering the ground. He is wished to see the the dedication and the commitment of father. Maybe he instilled that one. And yesterday when he retired, you have seen he has unprecedented records to his account. Everyone is saying everyone's status is mahi. The same thing our father of nation Mahatma Gandhi, when he was a child, little Mohan Das, he used to watch uh, Harish Chandra play. He was so influenced by the play that. He promised himself, irrespective of the conditions, irrespective of the circumstances, whatever the reason may be, I will not come out the path of the truthfulness and honesty. I will not come out from that. And the result, yesterday we have hosted the flag. We have celebrated our 74th Independence Day. Before I conclude, just one small anecdote I would like to tell you. There was a scientist and he was a huge industrialist. When the morning he woke up, he saw the newspaper and to his surprise, he found out his name appeared in the obituary column. And much to his surprise, he saw that he was condemned. The merchant of death died yesterday. He was condemned for his invention of dynamite and 355 other patents, which brought him a great fortune. So many industries, he was a multimillionaire in 1888, with the, when I saw that one, that advertisement, the obituary column, something happened, he was embarrassed. Perhaps he asked himself, is this the way I'm going to be remembered when I will not exist in the world? The next moment he planned, he called his juniors, he called his associates, and he prepared a bill, a four-phase bill, and 94% of his assets he has donated to a foundation because he wanted his posthumous reputation and he created the Nobel Foundation. And you know, the Nobel Foundation every year for outstanding contribution to humanity, they award Nobel Prize for physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. And in 1968, economics was added to that. He was none other than, as I said, Alfred Nobel. He was a multimillionaire. Everything is given. Why? Because something unseen, something invisible metamorphosed him. And just to say, enlightenment is not an achievement. It's an attainment. When values are added to life, life-changing miracles happen. And remaining everything happens for the reason. Because when life-changing miracles happen and the way you are remembered, you are alive. This is what, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anil, for a wonderful, wonderful anecdotal stories. And I, I, I'm very much aware that you know, your class, uh, classes are like that. And uh, your students are really lucky to have you as an inspiring teacher there. And don't leave it to fate, gains forth. Thank you so much. Yes. And... Uh, However, uh, we have to value the time and energy put in by our educators like Anil, uh, like uh, Subhash Nigaru, like uh, Swaminathan Garu, and uh, ready our future generation for the 21st century skills, which is very, very important. And even during this particular pandemic time, the transformation that has happened from a conventional teacher to a different domain as an electronic teacher also. And I, I really congratulate uh, uh, all, all three of our speakers and I hand over now uh, the platform to Anirban to invite our two of our members who will be speaking on their inspirational stories. Over to Anirban. Having heard our uh, speakers of the day, uh, it's time to take in their true spirit and uh, hear some inspiring stories from our own uh, members. I take the pleasure to invite Mr. Karunakar Singanam, Singanam Allah. I hope I got the name right, yeah. who's an advisor to engineering construction companies working in Andhra Pradesh and in Telangana. He has been an irrigation expert and is continued to, to be considered um, an irrigation expert in interstate water disputes. As a guest faculty of the land management training and water and land management training and research institute of Hyderabad. He has also represented India in international carom test series and participated in several national tournaments in five other sports. He is currently serving as a media director of 
IFHD, based out of France, the International Foundation of Human Development. Over to you, sir, for your inspiring story. Thank you. Are you able to listen? Are you audible? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Good morning, good, good, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am very, very happy. I am going to be first speaker of our uh, platform. I am very much thankful to all of our members. But they have taken the subject. In today's education, role of values in education. It is very, very essential need of the hour, I can say. That value should be in education. Regarding, with, I am a writer. Education without value is, in my view, education without value is flower without fragrance. <laughs> so nobody will like it. So education must have some values. So regarding values of education, that can that will improve our conduct, self confidence, positiveness, skillness, all. Value should be there in our education. The system has to make up the student. He should learn the manners. What is very much needed to live a good citizen of our country. I can now I am facing, I am as an irrigation engineer, I am facing so many problems. I will go one, one by one. Now I am, I will go for pauseness. One dam was constructed only one month back or something like that. But in the rainy season, some dam will be there on the bonds, at bonds. So media people came there and then they have seen some water is on the outside of the dam, walls, walls of the dam. They simply taken the photographs and then blasted tomorrow that uh, dam was going to collapse and uh, that, uh, that is leak, there is a leakage. So many people came to me, sir, what happened, what happened? Then I told, then I went to that uh, dam and then I, 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 I called the media people. You should know or you say, you have to consult the concerned officer without having any knowledge about it. How can you write that? It is not leakage, it is only sea page. <laughs> sea page can be allowed to any dam in a settling period. They have seen the sea page and they wrote about the leakage. You see the leave of education, what can I say? So we have to face. Then next day, I uh, resigned her. This is allowed, so no problem will not be there. So this, this, this type of things comes when the value is not there in, the, in our education. Next, the they don't, so many people don't know about TMC. They will write about TMC, QSEX, QMEX are something like technical terms. But they don't know the meaning of that. When that TMC is used, then when that QSEX has to be used, QMEX has to be used, what is meant by MDDL? These are technical terms. If anybody is writing about the dam or something like that, they should know the basics or at least they have to consult the concerned office. He will tell the things. Without knowledge and without getting proper education or values, they will write. These are the things we have faced in our, our uh, education works. Next, this is the skillness. See, for, we will take temporary staff for our works. Then one, one, one uh, time what happened, I have taken four months. I have, I have taken that members to the, my site. I thought that they will. They are actually demo civil civil students. Then I went there. Uh, after going there, I have given the survey materials or something like that. Just they are watching that survey materials, that stand and scale like that. So you do. I I told them, no, no, sir, we don't know how to do. We have just studied in the books. You see, I was I was shocked. Hey, you have completed your diploma and then you came. You don't know. The, no, sir, we don't. So that is the value I have seen in that practical experience. Then I, I sent them to a senior and then almost on that day I have wasted my time. Then I sent them to that senior man to give some training to that person. So this type, of, this type of problem should not come to any, any officer. Next, that 
value in education is that you will improve the self confidence self confidence i i will tell one incident in my life when i went to the first round of tennis tournament when i am going going to enter into the court so many people says me sir your opponent is very good player he is having so many records or something like that they would like to insert me something about that opponent so automatic psychologically i will be in a negative way but i never thought of it i am having that confidence and i went to the court simply i i didn't see the who is that opponent person just i respect that ball immediately i will reciprocate the respects from the ball just i never seen that that person who is dropping that no i am respecting the ball ball is also respected i won the match i have concluded these are the things that uh, education value should improve that self confidence also these are the high values should be motivated to the people moreover see i told about uh, the tms education to um, value balanced uh, that, that's, that should be combined with the spiritual knowledge that is also very good in my view so please i am very much thankful to my team they have given me this opportunity to tell something about the well i am actually a technical person just i that's why i have shared the examples of the technical things so i am very much thankful to my team hello anirban thank you thank you, you. karunakar ji for that wonderfully uh, technical message and recalling a few of the incidents from your irrigation past it was really an enlightening next i would like to call upon ms diksha reddy kolaikonda who is the director of operations of multiple academic heights public schools and bachpan play schools in hyderabad she has done her masters of management studies from duke university's fuka school of business she enjoys reading and traveling over to you ms diksha to hear your inspiring story Uh, sorry, I think there is a connection issue. She just uh, left. Uh, I think uh, she's joining. There is some uh, internet issues. Thank you, Prasanna ji, for notifying. Uh, we'll give it a minute if she joins back. If not, we will keep into time. Close the session in another minute. We we'll wait for her for a minute. There. This connection issue. Yeah. She okay. spoke on our phone. She is coming back. Oh, I think Raghuram, you can summarize meanwhile. All right. Uh, should I summarize the whatever it is spoken, right? And uh, yeah, Kar Karna Kargaru, thank you so much for uh, you know. It's it's a wonderful you know. He was uh, he is an expert in uh, as as he keeps on telling that you know he is an expert in engineering. He is an expert in engineering irrigation and everything. He is he is. i don't think it is blood in his uh, that's flowing in his uh, veins and it is a complete water only there you know he's <laughs> he's completely with that and uh, oh, he keeps telling me you know uh, how to connect you know education to this particular thing i am i think i am uh, you know away from this particular thing i said no sir uh, how do you get people from you get people from the school education system and all this so please help us tell you know how we in the education sector can prepare children for you your for your industry and he was uh, prepared and uh, it was a wonderful thing garna kargaru thank you so much for uh, respecting that particular point yeah now we have diksha um hello sir thank diksha, you diksha make it fast please yeah. yeah i'm i'm sorry about it i had some technical issue the last yeah. second i'm really sorry about it mm. but um yeah it was wonderful listening to all the speakers share their experiences and uh, hopefully i won't take too much of your time and um, uh, i'd like to talk a little bit about my experience good evening everyone and thank yeah. you for giving me this opportunity to share my experience which i'm sure is very limited compared to most of you um i grew up wanting to be a lot of different things an environmental activist astronaut architect entrepreneur and many more fortunately i grew up in an environment where i had the option to choose no when it was time for me to choose i chose to pursue architecture and i absolutely loved it 
Um, in a conversation with a friend, I found out about uh, Make a Difference. Or <clears throat> or my, an organization working towards approached me to discuss the possibility of organized careers like architecture that they would not otherwise be aware of. And the purpose of the workshop was to understand the aspirations and interests of these kids, educate them about careers that they would not necessarily learn about at school, and direct them accordingly. They go to government schools, grow up in tough neighborhoods, and these learning opportunities are everything to them. And, and we sort of knew that. So we organized this workshop where kids were given craft supplies and materials, and they were asked to imagine what they wanted to be to, and make a product in that field. For instance, if a kid wanted to be an engineer, we asked him to make a model of what he would potentially design as an engineer, that, just to get you know the creative juices flowing. True. <clears throat> And during this workshop, I had a profound realization. Kids are inherently creative. They want to be a lot of different things, just like I wanted to be a lot of different things. And growing up, creativity takes a toll. Ideas and thoughts become more confined and more mainstream. Out of the 100 kids that we organized that workshop for, we found 40 different careers that they want to pursue. But it got me thinking, you know, how many of them actually will? Who's creating those opportunities for them? And who's helping them understand the world they're growing up in? And this is true for most kids. Irrespective of the income group they belong to or the school they go to. It was then that I realized that creating this holistic learning program and environment is absolutely critical because it is said that 65% of the children entering grade school today end up working in jobs that don't even exist. I mean. If you just think about it, that's insane. We are training kids for something we don't even know about. How do you prepare them for that? So it was it was during that workshop that I sort of realized that this is something that I wanted to dedicate my time and energy to figure out. I am just taking my baby steps right now. I just started my journey and I can't wait to find out what I would find out on the way. And hopefully I'll be able to realize the dream of creating that holistic learning env environment for kids. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for giving me this opportunity to share a little bit about my experience. And um, uh, thank you, Raghuram, sir. Again, I apologize for the technical inconvenience. Thank you so much, Diksha. Anil. Uh, Anil Banu. Thank you, Raghuji. Uh, thank you, Diksha, for that inspiring message on how you chose to continue your journey of uh, inspiring creativity in children. Uh, with that, we'll close today's uh, proceeds by calling upon Ms. Prasanna to uh, propose the vote of thanks. No, oh. before that, uh, we have got Ram, uh, Ram Redigaru to brief uh, what his observation is about, please. Yes, yes. yes. So, as, uh, good evening all. Uh, thank you, Raghuramji and Ibn. And uh, yeah, uh, today's uh, first discussion of Utsahin's uh, on uh, discussion on role of values in education went very well and I'm very glad uh, that the thoughts, uh, inspiring thoughts and personal experience shared by the speakers will definitely help the audience to take as inputs and uh, you know uh, benefit. Hope of all the three speakers uh, spoke from their right from their heart and I'm glad that to Mr. Karuna Karagaru and uh, Ms. Diksha who are the members of Utsahin. So came forward and uh, shared their Utsaham, that enthusiasm. And uh, I'm expecting that other members from our Utsahin members every month will be coming forward and uh, inspire the world and in particular the, uh, the members of this Utsahin, the educating minds. So with this, I will not take much time. So I would conclude with thank you. Sangat Chatham. O to Ragnam Garni. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ram Redigaru. And, uh, you know, I used to say during my sessions also, you know, uh, now the days has come like, you know, we need uh, more number of, you know, Gandhiji, we need more number of Nobel Prize winners, more number of scientists and all these, but not my child. So <laughs> let us not, uh, let us ignore this particular fact and make every child of ours, every student of ours inspired by, you know, by our own, our own self. And let us all become 
a role model for our children it is drifting away and uh, yeah better late than than never please let us be prepare our own children to become those people yeah thank you so much and uh, i invite uh, miss prasanna for uh, her vote of thanks please thank you sir am i audible to everyone yes, yes. okay thank you sir again uh, and uh, we would like to thank from, on behalf of all uh, members of utsahin we would like to thank swaminathan sir for uh, giving the such engaging and the best thing i got from you is sir the personalization of education which is very much the need and which we are not at all focusing so thank you very much sir for stressing on that and mrs subhashini garu for the for your articulate speech ma'am and thank you very much for reiterating on the spiritual and cultural values and once again as a teacher i want you to thank you for giving a direction to all the teachers and i'm sure uh, most of us will take it forward from now we, we got a very good direction from yours ma'am thank you very much for that and uh, mr anil patnaik garu as you as your anecdotes i think uh, with uh, with this uh, we can also inspire a few students now i myself have a, have the confidence that i can inspire one or two at least thank you very much sir for your speech and uh, karuna kar sir thank you for being with us always and uh, it is our pleasure and our privilege to uh, to make you our first speaker sir thank you for your positive thoughts and thank you for all your blessings and diksha we wish you all the best for first thing and uh, i am sure after listening this is going live in uh, so many countries so you you have have inspired a lot of youth today so congratulations on that and we wish you good luck again thank you and uh, thank you to all the guests and all the invitees who are here to join with us and please keep encouraging us thank you very much and as usual i because we are running out of time team utsahin thank you very much all of you for joining and uh, no session will be complete without thanking ram ram reddy sir and raghuram sir thank you again for uh, coming up with this idea and getting all of us together sir thank you very much and thank you once again for giving me this opportunity sir over to raghuram sir now sir you have to unmute sir i thought that this will go to charan directly charan uh, now uh, let us have the national anthem played and uh, yeah charan please direct somebody yeah please oh what a wonderful show uh, so it's time to end the meeting uh, with the national anthem i would request everyone uh, here to stand up for the national anthem thank you राम रेडी करो